Mr. Ernest Worthing has just driven over from the station. He has brought his luggage with him. Mr. Ernest Worthing, before the Albany Tub. Uncle Jack's brother. But did you tell him Mr. Worthing was in town? Yes, miss. He seemed very much disappointed. I mentioned that you and Miss Prism were in the garden. He said he was anxious to speak to you privately for a moment. Yes, of course. Um, Tell Mr. Ernest Worthing to come here at once. And I suppose you'd better talk to the housekeeper about a room for him. Yes, miss. I have never met any really wicked person before. I feel rather frightened. I'm so afraid he'll look just like everyone else. He does. You are my little cousin Cecily, I'm sure. Oh, you are under some strange mistake. I am not little. In fact, I believe I am more than usually tall for my age. But I am your cousin Cecily, and you, I see from your card, are Uncle Jack's brother, my cousin Ernest, my wicked cousin Ernest. Oh, I am not really wicked at all, Cousin Cecily. You mustn't think that I am wicked. If you are not, then you have certainly been deceiving us all in a very inexcusable manner. I hope you are not leading a double life, only pretending to be wicked and being really good all the time. That would be hypocrisy. Oh, of course I have been rather reckless. I am glad to hear it. In fact, now you mention the subject, I have been very bad in my own small way. Well, I don't think you should be so proud of that, though I am sure it must have been very pleasant. It is much pleasanter being here with you. I can't understand how you are here at all. Uncle Jack won't be back till Monday afternoon. That is a great disappointment. I am obliged to go up by the first train on Monday morning. I have a business appointment that I am anxious to miss. Couldn't you miss it from anywhere but in London? No, the appointment is in London. Oh, well, of course I understand how important it is not to keep a business engagement, especially if one wants to retain any sense of the beauty of life, but still I think you had better wait until Uncle Jack arrives. I know he wants to talk to you about your emigrating. About my what? Your emigrating. He has gone up to buy your outfit. I certainly wouldn't let Jack buy my outfit. He has no taste in neckties at all. Oh, I don't think you will require neckties. Uncle is sending you to Australia. Australia? I'd sooner die. He said at dinner on Wednesday night that you would have to choose between this world, the next world, and Australia. Oh, well, the accounts I have received of Australia and the next world are not particularly encouraging. This world is good enough for me, Cecily. Oh, yes, but are you good enough for it? I'm afraid I'm not that. That is why I want you to reform me. You might make this your mission, if you don't mind, Cousin Cecily. Well, I'm afraid I've no time this afternoon. Well, would you mind my reforming myself this afternoon? Oh, it is rather quixotic of you, but I think you should try. I will. I feel better already. And yet you are looking a little worse. That is because I am hungry. Oh, how thoughtless of me. I should have remembered that when one is going to lead an entirely new life, one requires regular and wholesome meals. Won't you come in? Thank you. Might I have a buttonhole first? I never have an appetite unless I have a buttonhole first. A maréchal Niel? No. I'd sooner have a pink rose. Why? Because you are like a pink rose, Cousin Cecily. I don't think it can be right for you to talk to me like that. Miss Prism never says such things to me. Then Miss Prism is a short-sighted old lady. You are the prettiest girl I ever saw. Miss Prism says that all good looks are a snare. They are a snare that every sensible man would like to be caught in. Oh, I don't think I would care to catch a sensible man. I shouldn't know what to talk to him about. 